There are several different reasons why I like history, but really one of them is just the, the human stories. Uh, I, I love hearing stories about ordinary people who are put in extraordinary circumstances and do extraordinary things. And really, whenever you look, I, I don't think you see any better example of that than in the stories of those who have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Well, today, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and there's a museum that opened up here earlier this year that I am so excited to get in. Uh, I am at the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center, like I said, right here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, there are several different things in this museum that I have heard about, one of which is, I think, the Medal of Honor for Desmond Doss. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go inside the, the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center right here in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Extremely excited. We just got into the Medal of Honor Heritage Center here in uh, Chattanooga and the first room that you walk into, holy smokes, um, you can tell that they did not skimp on this place. Um, this is pretty amazing. There's, there's a lot that went into this. So uh, yeah, I'm going to kind of look around and, and explore and see what we got here. So I've learned something already that I didn't know before. Um, during the Revolutionary War, George Washington had something that he designed called the Badge of Military Merit, uh, which was awarded for um, meritorious action. And it was a heart on a purple silk cloth that would be worn. You can see a replica here on the left. And I guess that kind of became the model for the, the Purple Heart that we have now, which is awarded to soldiers uh, who were wounded in combat. But I guess that was kind of like the, the forerunner to the Medal of Honor. Interesting. Look at this thing. This is an original facsimile, so it's an original copy of the Declaration of Independence. So even though it was a, this is a copy, it, it is an original copy. Um, so a lot of these signers, including Thomas Jefferson, saw this and, and uh, kind of signed off on it and endorsed it for the exactness to the original document. That is cool. Now we've talked about Andrews Raiders on a few other videos and the origins of the Medal of Honor well, here is what the original Medals of Honor would have looked like. Huh. We have a, a whole lot of museum to look at, but I have pretty much got stuck in this first room. This place is so amazing. Uh, let's take a look at this. This is a giant interactive touch screen that is uh, essentially a digital record of every single Medal of Honor that has ever been awarded as well as the location and story of you know the action that took place that uh, warranted the the awarding of that medal. Uh, let me show you how this works because it is really cool. So let's say we're over here in the Pacific Theater and we want to go in to say Okinawa. Well, there were two medals of honor that were awarded on the north part of the island, seven here, nine here. So we can zoom in a little bit further. Whoops. Hit that. And now you can see all of the recipients on this part of Okinawa, which of course includes Desmond Doss. Hit that and then it pulls up information on DOS. 
I'm telling you, I could literally spend the rest of my day right here. That is amazing. Here's another interactive display that they have here where you can essentially look through this giant database and they have a bunch of different filters. So for example, let's say I want to look up all of the medals of honor in Vietnam. Now it filters through and I can you know, run it by name. There's all kinds of different filters that they have here where you can learn about these men and what they did. Holy cow, this is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in a museum. Very, very cool. I've never heard this quote by Lincoln before. A nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. Hmm. That's what this place is all about. Okay, well, I finally pulled myself out of that first interactive room, and now we're in the main part of the museum. And, of course, in a museum dedicated to the Medal of Honor, well, you have to start off talking about the origins. So this is a display talking about Andrews Raiders, who uh, went behind enemy lines during the Civil War, stole a Confederate train called the General, and uh, that was a big shanty outside of Marietta, and they made it all the way up to the Ringgold Gap. Almost made it to Chattanooga. And it was, it was for that act of bravery that, uh, that these men were awarded the very first Medal of Honor. Now, as you're making your way through this museum, uh, they, they kind of advance through history. So the, the Medal of Honor, of course, started in the Civil War. And here's one thing that uh, people may not know, is that in the Civil War, we have something pretty interesting with the medal. The only woman to have ever been awarded the Medal of Honor was a nurse by the name of Mary Walker. Now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on Mary Walker, but I would highly encourage people to, to come here and to learn more about her. Uh, in short, she was a uh, graduate from medical school, and when the Civil War started, um, was denied uh, you know, the, the role of a doctor uh, because she was a woman, and instead enlisted as a nurse. Uh, she was at Bull Run and was at Fredericksburg, was at the Battle of Chickamauga, was taken as a prisoner of war. She was an abolitionist. This, this was an incredible woman, and she is the only female in U.S. history to have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Pretty amazing. Here's something else that I love that they've done here. Um, they've taken the six core values of the Medal of Honor, and as you advance through the museum, well, you go into these little rotundas, and they'll have video of a Medal of Honor recipient talking about one of those core values. So this one is on patriotism. As we move from the Civil War, uh, they start talking about the Medal of Honor in the Indian Wars and also the Spanish-American War. So this is a display for a gentleman by the name of George Jordan who was awarded the Medal of Honor. He was a Buffalo soldier, uh, was awarded the Medal of Honor in the Indian Wars. And then they also have a thing about the Spanish-American War. There's old Teddy Roosevelt, my favorite president, who uh, really thought that he deserved the Medal of Honor um, for his actions at San Juan Hill. So, I don't know, Teddy Roosevelt, known for a lot of good things. Um, I don't know if humility would be up there, but anyway, uh, he thought he deserved it, but didn't get it. But his son did. 
Okay, moving into the next value, citizenship. So this is actively participating in our democracy and in our community. Courage. So definitely a hallmark value of the Medal of Honor. And right here at the Courage display, they have a thing about Alvin York, who was a uh, sergeant in World War I and was awarded the Medal of Honor for uh, taking a machine gun nest along with four officers and 128 men, a bunch of guns. So uh, reading about Alvin York, you'll, you'll be amazed at, uh, at what he accomplished. He became kind of a celebrity of sorts after the war. And then they have a few World War I displays, uh, you know, some few guns and uniforms. Very interesting. Okay, well, I am seeing a lot, and I am learning a lot, uh, but I'll have to admit there was one primary reason why I wanted to come here today, and that was for this right here. This is the Medal of Honor of Desmond Doss. Look at this. Nowhere else are you going to be able to go where you can see the actual uniform that belonged to Private Desmond Doss. And here it is. <laughs> wow. They also have uh, this poster in the background of the uh, Ten Commandments. Of course, Doss was heavily influenced by the Sixth Commandment, which said, Thou shalt not kill, led to him becoming a conscientious objector in World War II, wouldn't handle a weapon. They also have this uh, charm bracelet that was given to his wife, uh, Dorothy on the show This Is Your Life. All those charms feature, you know, different things associated with, with their story. And look at this. If you remember from the movie, if you saw the movie Hacksaw Ridge, um, Doss's father was an alcoholic and kind of a violent man. And uh, during a family fight, this revolver uh, was hidden by Desmond Doss and he was so impacted by it all that, that he vowed he would never touch another firearm again and this is the actual gun. Uh, they also have the backpack and entrenching tool that belonged to Doss but above it all look at this. This is the Medal of Honor that was awarded Private Desmond Doss for his actions on uh, Hacksaw Ridge in the Battle of Okinawa where he the citation says that he saved 75 lives he said it was less uh, his his men said that it was more uh, so they they compromised at 75 which is stunning look I, I can't I don't even have the words right now so amazing that they have all of this here Look at this. As you move through this hallway from one section to another, they have just this big wall of names of all these heroic people who have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Oh, including Audie Murphy. 
that's neat. That's that's a cool touch. Integrity. So being honest, keeping your word and doing what's right even whenever no one is watching. And here in this section, this is dedicated to uh, the namesake of this place, um, Charles Coolidge, who was awarded the Medal of Honor in France in 1944. And take a look at this. Here is the Medal of Honor that was awarded to Charles Coolidge. Gosh, I love that they have this stuff here for people to see. You really need to be paying attention whenever you come to this museum because there are just details everywhere. Like for example, I almost passed this up. Uh, this is the uniform that belonged to Coolidge. And you can see, in addition to the Medal of Honor, it looks like he was also awarded a Silver Star and a Bronze Star. Wow. Sacrifice. It's appropriate that here in this section of sacrifice we've moved into the Korean conflict and uh, here they tell the story of a guy named Ray Duke who in short uh, was a sergeant in the 24th Infantry Division and uh, there were some men that were were cut off and he uh, organized a small group to go in and get them. Uh, long story short he was injured or wounded three times and um, stayed behind and held off the the oncoming enemy uh, while his his men could withdraw. He was taken prisoner and died in captivity. Um, but anyway, here is his Medal of Honor. And you might see another medal there above it. This is the Taiguk Cordon of the Order of Military Merit. This is kind of like the South Korean Medal of Honor and both were awarded to Sergeant Ray Duke. Okay, we're moving now into the Vietnam War section and this this is a nice touch they've set this up to look like a, uh, a 1960s era living room with different scenes playing on these TVs from the uh, the Vietnam War era yeah that that is a really nice touch to kind of bring people into the history a little bit Oh wow, and if you look at this, I just noticed this. Beyond this wallpaper, you can kind of see these Huey helicopters taking off. Man, there's just all kinds of details in this museum. Commitment. So as we move into the commitment section, here you can see they have the Medal of Honor for a man by the name of Mitchell Stout. So you can look his story up. And then we wrap up with the War on Terror. And uh, in this section, they focus on the story of a Marine by the name of Kyle Carpenter, who just beyond belief uh, threw his body on a grenade, absorbed the blast, and survived. And if I'm not mistaken, is the youngest man to ever have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Um, he has a book that's really good, um, and I've, I've listened to his story on a few different podcasts. And uh, just a, an amazing, humble guy. But you can come here and, and learn more about his story. All right, so we're kind of towards the end of our walk through the museum here. And uh, this is a display honoring the life of Arthur MacArthur, whom we've talked about before, the Battle of Franklin. Uh, he was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions at the Battle of Missionary Ridge, which is not too far from here. And then they have, of course, 
the six core values of the Medal of Honor. This has been quite the place. Okay, so that was the, the main exhibit here at the Medal of Honor Heritage Center. And they also have uh, an area where they have like a rotating display. And I feel fortunate to, to be here uh, while this display is here. We talked a little bit about Mary Walker earlier. Take a look at this. So this is a recreation of a self-made uniform that Mary Walker designed. Of course, women at the time had to wear skirts. That can be a little bit difficult on the battlefield. So she designed one that had pants with a skirt over the top of it. Uh, now, this is not a reproduction. This is the real deal. This is the medical case that was owned and used by Dr. Mary Walker whenever she was serving in the Civil War. There's a few pictures of Mary Walker, but look at this. Here on display is Mary Walker's Medal of Honor. This is on loan from the Pentagon, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the only other place that it has ever been displayed. But not only do they have the medal, they also have the case. And then here they have just tons of information where you can learn about the life and service of Mary Walker. That was seriously amazing. Um, what they have done with this place uh, really has to be experienced. Uh, I think it would do all of us good to, to come to places like this and uh, learn about the men and the woman uh, who have been awarded the Medal of Honor and see what we can take away from it ourselves. Things like courage, integrity, patriotism, sacrifice. Uh, things that, that will not only make us better, but will make us as a nation and a community better. So, uh, yeah, if you're ever in Chattanooga, definitely come to this place, the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center. Uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time here today.